Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is part three of making a Anglo-Saxon Seax. This isn't the video I wanted to bring you this week. I wanted to do heat treating and a reveal for the pattern welding. Uh, however, I was only able to be in the forge three days, so I had to squeeze a video in. So instead, I decided to make the guard for it and show you guys how I'm going to do that. Early Anglo-Saxon sword and seax guards. Some of the time they would have been a sandwich of organic and metal materials. If you have a look at the Staffordshire Horde for instance you will see a lot of front plates and back plates from guards and in between these plates would have been sandwiched some organic material uh, such as bone or wood or horn. Now for this guard I am going to take a back plate and a front plate of brass and I'm going to sandwich a horn spacer between them and I think that that will look quite smart once it's all been polished up. So have a look in the description of this video I will find some links of period appropriate guards uh, and you'll see where I'm going with this. So to start off with I didn't actually touch the tang in the last video I just looked at the blade uh, so I'm now going to use the linisher to dress the tang so that it is slightly less thickness than the blade itself. Once I've set the overall dimensions of the tang I will then take a file and just file some nice square shoulders for the guard to sit on. So I'm going to be making the guard out of brass. Now the original 6th, 7th and 8th century guards I've been looking at were, would have been made of gold. Obviously gold is a touch expensive for me. And I've got these offcuts, so I'm going to stick some sticky labels on them in order to mark up where everything is on the guard. And using a ruler I will stick a central line down it, and that's going to be my main reference point. And on this line I will mark off the width of the tang and the width of the blade. So with the width of the tang marked up, I will centre dot uh, the first piece of brass and that will show me where to drill to allow the tang to slide through. And I will actually mole grip two bits of brass together and that will help save time because I'll just work them both at the same time. So keep an eye on how they're uh, holding together, you don't want the top one to be rattling about. So with both of them drilled I will head over to the vise and I will just join up these drill holes with a needle file. I'll just use a needle file until a bigger file can fit through and then the bigger file will obviously work a bit quicker. And basically you just want to keep offering up the tang of the blade and just file a little bit at a time until it fits. Uh, you want a nice tight snug fit, it looks a lot neater. So just observe where the tang is fouling and file away as appropriate. So once the two pieces of brass are nicely fitted together I'm going to take off any excessive material. Now you saw before that I've drawn a rough outline of what the guard is going to look like. So I'm just taking that off and I'm leaving plenty of material. This is purely for convenience that I'm knocking off any excessive bits. Uh, Head over to the linisher as well and take it a little bit closer, but at this stage you do want it to be oversized. So with both parts roughed out, I'm going to mark up the central part of uh, the slot for the guard. And that's going to allow me to put a central line down one of the 
one of the halves of the guard. And on that central line I will just put a little centre dot. And this is where a fixing hole for a rivet is going to be drilled. So and I'm using a, a 3mm drill bit here I think. Because it's going to have a 3mm rivet in it. So I will just drill the first one and then I will use use the first plate to mark up the second plate. I'm not going to drill through them both at the same time because I need to be accurate at this stage so once the second plate is marked up I can then just drill straight through that. So the next thing I will do is I will actually take that first plate again and the horn spacer which goes between the two brass plates uh, I will drill through that using one of the brass plates as a guard. So with all the parts drilled I will just put a piece of sandpaper on a flat surface in this case it's my laying out table. I'll just knock off any asperities on the brass and on the horn anything that would stop the three parts from sitting nicely together. And at this stage I have a piece of brazing rod which I will just anneal on the fire. So with brass to anneal, just get it up to a red heat, dull red heat, careful not to melt it, and quench it off. Uh, brass is different from ferrous metals uh, because you will actually quench it to anneal it. So I'll also knock off the end uh, just to make it slip through the hole better. And I will offer up all the parts and use the brass rod to line everything up. To this stage I will use a scribe, in this case a needle file, to just mark up the outline of the slot for the guard, for the tang rather, uh, on the horn. And I will head back to the pillar drill and just drill out the outline for the tang. So once that's drilled out I will run over back to the vise and just clean that up a bit. Uh, it just needs to be filed open enough that the tang will slip through. So with all that done I will position the brass rod for the rivet and cut off excess. The end of the brass rod is a bit thin, which is why I just got shot of it completely. So you just want it to stick out a tiny amount. And I will just pin that down. Now bear with me on this, you can see there's plenty of horn sticking out, there's plenty of brass sticking out. Do remember it's not at its final size at this stage. Uh, I'm literally joining it all together because then I can cut it to size and grind it to size. So that's assembled, nice and tight, nice and flush. So now I head back to the vise and using the grinder I'll just lop off lop off that excess horn. I am wearing a respirator mask for this. It's not particularly pleasant dust to have getting into your system. It smells like burnt hair. So the excess material cut off, I will go to the linisher. Now, if you don't have a linisher you can very easily do this with a rasp and a file. Uh, a bit quicker on the linisher. Uh, and I will just grind that to a accurate and pleasing shape.
And the final part is to just clean up for the tang on the inside. Uh, just to make sure that slides on nice and easy. Uh, you do want to tuck, well I like to have a tiny bit of friction in there. Uh, it just helps keep the, keep the guard a bit more stable. To finish it off I will just use some increasing grits of sandpaper just to polish it up, get the linisher marks out, get the grinder marks out, any tooling marks. This will all polish out. And finally I will seal the horn with uh, linseed oil which will wick into the capillaries. Just bring it out nice and shiny. I'll give it a bit of a buff with a cloth as well. So there we go. Here is the finished guard fitted up. So like I say the blade still needs a polish and heat treating and etching and I'm hoping to do that next week for the next video. There will be more metal work on the handle than just the guard uh, but that will be a surprise for a future handling video. I've had a few extra people donating on Patreon this week uh, so their name has been added to the list. Thanks a lot guys. Couldn't be doing these videos without you so very very grateful for it for helping me share my skills with the world. So thanks a lot guys and I will See you in the next one.